오랜 역사 속에서 기독교와 유대 민족은 서로 가슴 아픈 역사적 사건들을 많이 겪었습니다. 그럼에도 불구하고 결국 기독교인과 유대인들은 서로 연결되어야 되고 또 화해해야 하지 않을까 그런 생각을 해보는데요. 이런 일들을 실제로 하고 있는 단체가 있습니다. IFCJ, International Fellowship Christian and Jews라고 하는 단체인데요. 매년 160만 명의 기독교인들로부터 후원을 받아서 이스라엘의 어려운 유대인들을 돕는 단체라고 합니다. 이 단체를 설립한 분이 예 하일 엑스타인이라고 하는 랍비인데요. 이분은 2010년도 미국 뉴스위크지에서 선정한 미국에서 가장 영향력 있는 유대인 50명 중에 한 분으로 또 선정됐고요. 예루살렘 포스트지에서도 2014년도 2015년도 이스라엘에서 가장 영향력을 미치는 유대인 라비 중에서 50명 중에 한 분으로 선정된 분으로서 아주 굉장히 귀한 분이고 만나 뵙기 어려운 분인데 오늘 브레드 TV 인터뷰에 또 응해 주셨습니다. 그래서 오늘 이 하일 엑스타인 IFCG 총재와 함께 어떤 사역을 하고 있는지 이분들이 하고 있는 일들에 대해서 우리가 어떻게 관심을 가져야 되는지 그런 이야기를 들어보도록 하겠습니다. 총재님 이렇게 귀한 시간 내주셔서 고맙습니다. Thank you very much. Thank you. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. 먼저 이렇게 아름다운 곳에 초청해 주셔서 너무 고맙고요. 제가 지금 총재님 만나 뵈려고 오, 온 곳이 갈릴리 호수가 내려다 보이는 갈릴리 호수 바로 옆에 있는 높은 산 위에 있는 어느 한 장소인데 너무 아름다운 곳에서 이렇게 총재님을 뵐수 있게 돼서 너무 감사하고요. 우선 IFCJ 어떤 단체인지 그리고 어떤 사역들을 하고 있는지 하실 얘기는 많으시겠지만 우선 좀 간단하게 소개를 해주시죠. I was called by God to be a bridge baker between Christians and Jews, and I've been uh, in this ministry for 40 years. And uh, God has blessed our ministry tremendously. And today we are the largest philanthropy in the world, actually, of Christians who are supporting Israel and the Jewish people. And we have 1.6 million Christian donors who tithe and who give of their Uh, uh, widow's might sometimes sacrificially to help Israel and the Jewish people. IFCJ에서 지금 진행하고 있는 프로젝트들이 한 100여 가지 이상 된다고 했는데 그 많은 것들 다 소개하고 싶으시겠지만 특별히 제가 어제 예루살렘의 야들라 카시시라고 하는 그 장소를 방문했어요. 유대인 할머니 할아버지 노인분들이 앉아서 뭔가를 열심히 만들고 그러는 장면을 봤는데 야들라 카시시가 어떤 곳인지 뭐 하는 곳인지 그곳에다 IFCJ에서 어떤 방식으로 후원하고 있는지 그런 얘기를 좀 설명을 해 주시죠. Yadla Kashish is one of our special projects. We have hundreds of projects all over Israel and in fact all over the world. But Yadla Kashish brings dignity to the elderly. The Bible teaches that we are to stand up for the elderly. But in today's society, uh, often the elderly, once they can't produce anything, they are put aside by society. And then they have problems with uh, financial needs, Uh, then they have problems with not having anything meaningful to do, and they have physical problems more, and they become isolated. When we did research, we found that one of the biggest problems of elderly in Israel is loneliness. They are alone. And so Yad La Kashish, uh, as you saw, gives elderly people a reason and meaning to get out of bed in the morning. They make beautiful things that they sell so that they can have the dignity of work. It's not a charity for them. They feel they are doing work and making nice products. And at the same time, 
you see uh, the ingathering of the people of Israel there. You saw Jews from Ethiopia, black Jews from Ethiopia, Jews from Iraq, Jews from Russia, Jews from America, Jews from South Africa, from all over the world. God is bringing his children home as the Bible and Isaiah foretold that a day would come when he would gather in the exiles to Israel. Today, we have these exiles who've come to Israel from all over the world, and they're older, and their lives lack meaning. And so this place, Yad Lakashish, gives them dignity. It gives them social uh, uh, place to meet people, to talk to people, so they're not alone and lonely. And so when we want to honor our donors, uh, for example, someone gives a gift of $50 to the fellowship or monthly 50, we, we don't just buy something from the street to give them. We buy the wallpaper uh, paintings or whatever it is that they are doing we buy them from them so that they can feel they've earned that money. And then we give it to the donors so that they can see, look at what your donation is doing. 제가 어저께 또 갔던 곳에는 여러 명이 책상에 앉아서 계속 걸려오는 전화를 받고 상담하는 그런 모습을 봤어요. 일종의 무슨 콜센터 같은데. 그거는 IFCG에서 직접 운영하는 것이라고 이야기를 들었거든요. 그 콜센터에 대해서도 좀 소개를 해 주시죠. We established just it's our one of our newest projects we just did last year. We started it and it's booming. It's uh, growing. We now have 25 or 30 people and we speak seven languages. Uh, and we open it up to all the people of Israel. If anyone has a, a problem or a need, they could be Arab, they could be Christian, Muslim, Jewish, children, army people, teachers, doctors, whatever they We had just last week a call of an 86-year-old woman who's alone, a Holocaust survivor. And she was being kicked out from her apartment. It was a Thursday we got the call. And the landlord said, you haven't paid your rent for three months because she couldn't afford it. And she was going to be kicked out on Sunday. We were able to help by Friday to get her another apartment so that she would have a place. She wouldn't be in the street. So uh, that's, this was my dream for many years that everyone in Israel have some place to call, some place to turn to uh, with hope. 그러면 하루에 보통 전화가 몇통 정도 걸려오고 걸려오는 전화들 중에 제일 많은 퍼센테이지를 차지해야 하는 게 어떤 도움을 요청하는 것들입니까? We get uh, approximately now uh, 600 uh, requests for help every day. And before the holy days, the feasts, when people have especially a need for food, the numbers will go up. So we get hundreds of calls uh, and uh, 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 requests a day. The largest number of them are actually calling for uh, uh, something to do with the home. Uh, milk for babies, formula for babies. Uh, there are poor women who can't afford diapers.
Here in Israel, you have to buy the books for school. And there are lots of children who can't afford to pay for the books. And uh, uh, so we buy for them school books. Right now, we happen to have a campaign going, uh, which is especially before school starts, um, for backpacks to carry the books. Because what happens is children who have money in their home, uh, you know, regular people who can afford back tax. The children go with all these fancy backpacks, Batwoman and uh, all these different uh, designer backpacks and they go to school. And then the poor children come with a bag uh, from the supermarket, a plastic bag where they put it in and they're sometimes embarrassed because they can't eat, have a lunch. So we pay for the bag, for the books, for the pencils, for lunch for them, a sandwich that they should have. Uh, so it runs, and as I said, we have lots of calls, unfortunately, uh, people who are going to commit suicide and we've saved the call center has saved quite a few people's lives who were ready because they felt they were alone and nobody cared and when they can call this number and get someone on the phone who cares for them and who will help them with their problems uh, and what their needs are it gives them hope and that's what we want to do. Christians and Jews coming together to give the people of Israel hope. 근데 저희가 알기로는 일반적으로 유대인 하면은 전 세계의 경제를 쥐락펴락할 정도로 돈을 많이 벌고 돈 버는 기술이 있는 민족이다. 그렇게 알고 있고요. 또 이스라엘도 다른 중동 국가들에 비해서 굉장히 빠른 시간 안에 경제적 안정을 이룬 나라이면서 또 우리나라하고 비교해 봤을 때도 GDP가 우리나라보다 이스라엘이 훨씬 높아요. 그러니까 우리나라보다 더잘 사는 나라로 알고 있는데 아직까지도 그렇게 밥을 못 먹고 옷을 못 입고 아파도 병원에 못갈 정도로 경제적으로 어려운 사람들이 이스라엘 안에도 많이 있나 보죠. Today there is a perception among friends of Israel, and I should also say among many Jews, that there is great wealth in the Jewish community. And the truth of the matter is, there is great wealth in the Jewish community. There are many wealthy Jewish people in America. Today, there are some wealthy Jewish people even in Israel, uh, but for the most part, most Jews live in that middle uh, area. What's happened in America, I don't know about Korea, but it's definitely happened in Israel, is that the middle class has collapsed. And people who were in the middle class are today, many of them are now in the lower class. They're poor. And the wealthy are going up so that the gap between the wealthy, few, and the number of people who are below the poverty line has increased tremendously. So that the bottom line is, Today, one out of every three children in Israel lives below the poverty line. One out of every four elderly lives below the poverty line. So an elderly person who came from Russia or something uh, 20 years ago or 10 years ago and doesn't have any money, gets from the government 
a special social uh, benefit of 2,600 shekel a month, which is uh, just a few hundred dollars. With that, this elderly person has to pay rent, which often takes up 70% of, what they, of their uh, government check. They have to get food. They have to pay heating. That's a big thing. At night and during the winter, it's very cold here in various parts of Israel, uh, in Jerusalem. And uh, uh, they can't pay for the electricity. And in the, in the days like today, uh, where it's uh, so hot, they can't afford to have an air conditioner. Even if they had an air conditioner, they couldn't afford to use it. Now these people are also often paying for medicines. So they have to pay for rent, they have to pay for food, they have to pay for medicine, and they have to pay for electricity and water. There's no way they can do that on 2,600 shekel a month. So what we do is we try to provide for something, one of those th things or more, so that if we provide them money for electricity, at least their electricity won't be cut off, shut off. If we provide them with electricity and water, then maybe they can manage with 2,600 shekel on just for, uh, for just medicine, he, uh, part, uh, uh, rent, and uh, food. But they can't go out to a dinner. They can't go to a restaurant ever. I, I, for me, one of the most tragic situations that I still remember, still, still choke up from it. I visited a mother, a single mother with uh, one child. And she was working in cleaning uh, and uh, getting very, very little from the government because if you work, the government won't give you the money. And so sometimes it pays for people not to work. But this woman wanted to work. She wanted a job, so she got a job uh, cleaning uh, 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 houses or uh, hotel rooms. She had one daughter who had asthma, and this uh, girl, uh, I went to visit them and to bring them a machine that uh, she could use in cases of emergency with um, adrenaline shot if they needed it, uh, if she couldn't breathe, and, and things for her asthma. Okay, I came into the house. It's a little apartment that's as big as this room. Uh, and, all, and the lady was crying when I brought her this. So I thought that she was crying out of gratitude because people cry out of gratitude, thank you, thank you, and she was saying, thank you, thank you, but she kept crying. And I said, no, don't worry, you're a good mom. You take care, because she felt guilty being poor, not being able to provide a basic thing like health for asthma for her daughter. I asked her, well, then why is she still crying? She's a good mother. She cares about her kid. And then she just started crying and telling me, because today is my daughter's 13th birthday, and I can't afford a present for her. Uh, there are people who need us.
기독교인들의 그 돈을 받아서 내가 이스라엘로 돌아간다. 기독교인의 돈을 받아서 내가 이스라엘에서 먹는 거, 입는 거, 잠자는 걸 해결한다. 이런 사실을 알게 되면 굉장히 뭐 기분 나빠하거나 자존심 상해하거나 나 이런 돈안 받겠다. 뭐 이럴 수도 있을 것 같아요. That's an excellent question. Because the truth of the matter is, they're shocked. Every time we give a gift to someone, it could be that insulin package where I say this is from Christians in America. It could be a food package. Uh, it could be the bed for the child that doesn't have a bed. We say this is from Christians who want to bless you. Most of the time, they're shocked. They're surprised. What? They think I'm, I'm say, I say, no, there are Christians who have donated this and often sacrificed to do so to give you this. Unconditional love, no ulterior motives, no missionary, just to bless you. And then let God and the Holy Spirit do what he will do. But, and they initially are, uh, surprised and they usually say something like why would a christian in canada or a christian in korea or a christian in we get gifts from christians all over the world singapore why would they care about me and i say because they love you and they want you to know that you're not alone and that these Christians stand with you and want to help you. The fact is that today we are well known and I'm known so that when I come with funds or when we do our work, they know already it's from Christians. At the same time, so there's a deep appreciation from uh, Jews for all that Christians are doing to help Israel. But there is also a segment, a small segment, five, ten percent maybe of the people who do not want to take money from Christians who are afraid that it's missionary, it's just so that they will come to accept Jesus, and they are afraid, given the history of mistrust of 2,000 years, all of a sudden, where Christians for 2,000 years were coming at you with a sword and saying, convert, convert, accept Jesus. Now they're coming with food packages. And they're not saying accept Jesus. They're just saying it's as un So there are some Jews who are still suspicious and not trusting. When I first started this ministry, it was the first one 40 years ago of raising Christian support for Israel and Jewish people, especially by a rabbi, by an Orthodox rabbi. Uh, and so I was attacked often, uh, sometimes physically attacked. I had to have bodyguards. From who? From the more religious right-wing section that said, we don't want to work with Christians. We don't want their money. We don't want to have anything to do with Christians. And what was I saying? What was I representing? Bridge building. Reach out. As the Bible says, how good and how blessed it is, pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in peace. And you find those, what we call zealots, in every community. Every community has people who have a prejudice. In this case, there are still Jews especially European Jews, not so much American Jews, because America grew up with the uh, Christians. These people grew up uh, uh, with the Holocaust and with anti-Semitism 
and pogroms and living in ghettos. And for 2,000 years, Christians, people who called themselves Christians, certainly not what Jesus would have wanted, uh, were persecutors of Jews. So the ministry that I, through, with God's, has implanted in me, it's not just giving money to help people in need. It's building a bridge of reconciliation, of healing, Sometimes Christians use this language. I'm, I'm embarrassed to use it. They want to atone for what was done to the Jewish people in the name of their Lord Jesus Christ. And so instead of doing bad, they want to do good. And they want to show the Jewish people that it's different today that today Christians realize more and more that their roots are Jewish, that Jesus was a Jew, that they can't understand the New Testament unless they understand being here in Israel. Their Bible comes alive when it, it's not just another country like Greece or Italy or Singapore or Hong Kong or China. This is where the roots of both of our faiths come from. It's time for us from both sides, for Christians to reach out to Jews, break down the walls of this trust, and for Jews to see that it's sincere, that these people are really want to help these elderly Jews in Yad Lakashish, or to help people with their problems to help people come on Aliyah and fulfill prophecy. Last year, we helped 1.4 million people. I, I still can't believe it myself because uh, it started with nothing. I started the organization in the closet of a friend who was a lawyer in Chicago. Uh, I grew up in America. I come from an Orthodox home. I'm an Orthodox rabbi. I never met a Christian till I was 25 years old. After five or six years, I felt a calling from God to uh, start a ministry that would do this, that would build bridges of healing and understanding and cooperation between Christians and Jews, and deepen the bonds between Christians and Israel. And that's when I left everything. I just followed, like Father Abraham, to the land that God would show me.